Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at function parameters, continuing my course on JavaScript and Node.js for beginners. So in the last video, we took a look at how to define a simple function. Now actually, JavaScript is very flexible. It lets you define functions in a variety of ways. And um, we can also put functions in structures called classes. And we can do functional programming where we're passing functions to functions. But we're going to look at that later on. Here we're just going to concentrate on some basic building blocks and getting some basic ideas uh, straight. So um, let's create a new file here and I'm going to call it parameters.js. We'll start with use strict. And we'll create a function. Let's create a function. I'll call it greet again, which is what I called it in the last um, video. Um, so function names basically follow the same convention usually as variable names. So um, if you wanted to create a function called greet person, uh, let's say you wanted to create a function called hello world. Usually you'd start it with a lowercase first letter most often, or it's the most common convention. And the second word of it will begin with an uppercase first letter, like this. Um, I'm tempted to actually call it hello world, but anyway, no, let's call it greet. So as before, we have the keyword function and we have a name that we made up for it. And then we have two round brackets and we have two curly brackets. And in here we can put some statements, whatever we like, as long as it's valid JavaScript. Let's write console.log and hello. So this by itself doesn't do anything other than define a function. If I run this now, so node parameters.js, nothing comes out. Uh, we have to actually call the function somewhere. and We can call it wherever we, wherever we like in our program here. Um, although, so what we would normally do is this. So let's write greet. Uh, to actually call the function. In other words, to actually make the function execute. So to make it run the code that it contains. And then if I if I write node parameters.js, it says, hello. Let's try moving greet above here, above where we define the function. And it actually still works. So in some programming languages, you could only call the function after you've defined it. And that still looks kind of right to me. So if you, if you think about the JavaScript interpreter sort of reading downwards, um, it's going to go down, the function gets defined, and then we can actually call it. But actually JavaScript typically is very flexible. So it allows us here to call the function before we've actually defined it. And it's, it's able to go and get the function definition for you. But um, that's not true in all programming languages. So it's worth being aware of that. To me, it kind of feels more right because I'm used to other programming languages to call the function after it's defined. Anyway, um, we're gonna look at function parameters in this video. So in the last video, I said that um, there the idea of functions comes from mathematics and a function in mathematics is like a black box where you throw a number into the box, so to speak, and it processes the number and spits another number out. Um, and in programming, we don't have to pass any data to functions and we don't have to get any data out of it. So here we're not doing, the function is purely it's purely some statements that it executes, but we can nevertheless pass data to a function and we can get data out of it again. Let's take a look at how to do that. So supposing we want to alter the behavior of this function so that it outputs a name. So it says like, hello, Bob, or whatever. Between these two round brackets, we can write the name of a variable. So it's, um, although in effect here, we're declaring a variable, but we don't 
use any kind of word like let or anything. We just write the name of the variable that we want to use. So let's supposing I want a variable called name. I just write name there. And this is something that I'm going to pass to the function when I call it. So the function is going to have this name, whatever's in there. We don't know. It could be anything. It could be a number. But hopefully it's something appropriate because we've called it name. And um, I'm going to output that with console.log. Let's write comma name. Now, um, this so this says that this function uh, has a parameter called name. In other words, it can accept some data which is going to be placed in this name variable to actually pass that data to the function when we call it in the round brackets uh, after, you know, where we actually call the function. We can pass in um, some data. Let's write Bob. And let's run this and see what it does. So I run it and it says, hello, Bob. What's happening here? Well, um, a kind of analogy I like to make is that when we call the function, these the two round brackets here are kind of like a shoot. And what we're doing is we're throwing Bob, in this case, down the shoot. We're throwing some data down the shoot. The shoot comes out here where we define the function. And this Bob ends up getting thrown into this variable here. And then we can use that variable here. Um, so let's try it again with a different name. Let's write greet and uh, let's write Claire. We've got to be, um, <laughs> got to use uh, male and female names uh, equally, but then there are also sort of um, names that are neither male or female. It's a minefield basically. But anyway, uh, let's run this. Okay, so hello Bob and hello Claire. Um, so we're using the same function, but we're changing how it works because the first time it says hello Bob, the second time it says hello Claire. If you if you've ever used a, a synthesizer like a musical the musical instrument, um, it will have various things that you can change and control, and we call those parameters. So you change the parameters parameter values on the synthesizer to change what sounds it makes. Functions are kind of the same. So we call this a parameter because it changes how the function works. This is a function parameter um, and it, it is also a variable and we're outputting the variable in our console.log. When we actually pass values to the function, we call them arguments. So we supply an argument to the function. Kind of strange lingo. Why Why it's argument um, I guess that comes from mathematics as well, but uh, you'll get used to it. So this is a function parameter, um, this name variable here, and here we're passing arguments to the function. We can actually also pass more than one. So um, supposing we wanted to pass in the name of a day. So we can have a list of parameters here. Let's write comma day. Um, so I'm not using it at the moment. If I were to run it at the moment, uh, so many programming languages would, uh, if I try to run this now, so I've got a function that expects two arguments because it's got two parameters and I'm running it each time with only one argument. Many programming languages would gag at that point. They would refuse to execute. They would say, no, this is wrong. But JavaScript happily executes it, does the same thing as before at the moment. Um, JavaScript's extreme flexibility uh, partly comes from just, just, I suppose, it being an interpreted uh, sort of scripting type language. You know, it, it um, interpreted in the sense that when you run it, there's an actual program node in this particular case that's actually interpreting the program and running it. And interpreted languages tend to be more flexible than compiled languages where you take text and you turn it into a binary file, you compile it into a binary file. It's also weakly typed, so um, variables don't have types. It's not like we have one kind of variable that's an integer and one that's a piece of text and so on. You know, we have weak typing in JavaScript, so it's very flexible in the nature of it. And because it was originally designed to run in browsers, 
um, it doesn't make any strict demands on the on the programmer, and it lets you do things like this. But anyway, let's actually make use of this day variable. So um, let's say hello, comma name, comma full stop. It is, and then let's output the day. What happens if I run this? So now I'm, I've got this day parameter, but I'm only supplying one argument, just the name each time I run the function. If I run this, it says it is undefined. So it lets me refer to day, but because I haven't given it, I haven't actually given it a value, it just says undefined, but let's give it a value. So here I'm gonna, when I actually call the function, I need to supply ideally, usually, most of the time, I'm going to be supplying a list of arguments that matches what we've got here. So let's write comma Tuesday. And here let's write comma Saturday. So if I run this, it says, hello, Bob, it is Tuesday. Actually, I it, this looks a bit ugly with uh, because console.log puts a space here. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that full stop. Nah, that'll do. It's, it's quite ugly, actually. Maybe it looked better with a full stop in. It doesn't matter anyway. Hello, Bob. It is Tuesday. Hello, Claire. It is Saturday. So, you know, again, going back to my shoot analogy, it's, here it's as if we've thrown the values Bob and Tuesday down the shoot, and they end up getting stuffed into the corresponding parameters here. Um, and we can make use of them here. We can also, of, of course, you, you might guess we can pass variables instead of literal values. So let's say we have a, a variable. Um, we can call it what we want. So we could call it, let's call it something other than day, like day of week equals Tuesday. We can pass... Um, Day of week here instead of a literal hard coded value. And this works as before. This can also be confusing to beginners um, because uh, this variable doesn't have the same name as this variable, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the mechanism here is not trying to match names of variables. This uh, is simply an argument, it's simply a value that gets passed to the function, thrown down the chute, so to speak, and it, it ends up um, being sort of received at the lower end of the chute here. So you, you're just simply taking the comma-separated list of values and shoving them into the corresponding variables here. And of course, you can um, also pass in numbers as well and other kinds of things. You can even pass in arrays um, so we'll, we'll leave it there for this video. The thing to do as always is try this out for yourself and see if you can get creative with it, see if you can change it somehow, try functions with three parameters once you think you've got the hang of it and you know see how you get on. It is just a question of typing this out to understand it. Uh, I don't think it's good to s spend a lot of time puzzling over it. The thing is to actually try it, get it working for yourself and eventually your fingers will start remembering what to type and this will become second nature to you. So until next time, happy coding.